women nagging. Like anybody ever want like what what specifically are they referring to? Because I don't feel like I nag. Yeah, I have. I yes. really have. Yes. I guess I, I, if you look at it by saying the same thing over and over, I guess it's nagging. Yeah, but I'm I'm gonna tell you, Sierra said it best. It's the idea that it's not just saying the same thing over and over again. It's that you're not directly communicating what the fuck you want. Where are we going with this? Yeah. Like, where is this going overall? It it turns into nagging. Well, I think I was, uh, I think I was like, let it, let it be known what I want. It's just like the results weren't there. That wasn't what I'm telling you. But it, this is, and I'm glad she's saying this, that it turns into that when you, when you have, okay, so we just went through this whole book, right? And when we talk about boundaries, it talks about assertively communicating, right? If you genuinely assertively communicated what it is you need, want, trying to get done, what you're trying to do, right? When you realize that you can't get that from them or they don't got the mental capacity or the physical capacity to deliver that. It does become nagging after that point for you to keep bringing it up. If you communicated it clearly. I did. If I say to all of y'all very clearly, I need a dollar before we move forward. So from everybody that's in this Zoom right now, I need one dollar sent to this cash app before we move forward. Right. Clear communication, assertively expressed. I told y'all what it takes to move forward, right? And let's say half of y'all send a dollar, right? And I say it again. I need one dollar from everybody in it before we move forward, right? After the second, third, fourth, it's nagging. Yeah, because you should be able to go ahead and like, so I think it becomes nagging because you need to make a decision Come on. on exiting. Come on, Chrissy. Exactly. That's becomes nagging. Yeah. Because the idea is you don't me. got to pay the dollar. You don't have to pay. You get what I'm saying? You don't have to pay the dollar. Now, the idea is I say I need the dollar for us to move forward, right? For me to go on further with this. You don't have to pay the dollar. The idea is I need to decide rather the fuck I'm going to move forward with or without you. But to sit here and keep saying, Chrissy, you ain't pay your dollar. Chrissy, you ain't pay your dollar. Come on now, Chrissy, you didn't pay your dollar. Hey, I thought that you said, and she could have said when I first said it, that love, I'm going to pay the dollar. Two weeks later, Chrissy, you still ain't paid the dollar. Chrissy, you still ain't. That's nagging. You already seen that she ain't doing it. So, look, look, I got a question. Go for it. So, when we're dating, I know you said do the eight dates. Mm-hmm. Just to figure out who we're dating. Yep. Should we keep discussing some of this stuff that we learned in this book? Yes. Throughout those eight dates? Yes. Because I don't want to feel like I'm coming off too strong by discussing this. So like here, here's second. what, here, and I'm glad you said this, right? Here's what I want you to, here's what I, uh -oh. Tiff, go ahead and mute. Okay, so here's what I want y'all to understand, right? All of the different books that we read in this book club and discuss are, Great conversation starters in on dates, in social communications with friends. The idea is you don't want to come off as if you're trying to make them receive this. The idea is if me and Ariel on a date, right, and she wants to see where I'm at with, let's say, setting boundaries, she can bring up what she knows and see where the conversation goes. Our problem in the past is that we will tell it like we're now trying to tell you how you need to be. She can date me. And let's say she brings up this stuff about boundaries and based on just communicating like, hey, I, I'm in a book club and we read a book about boundaries. And, you know, I learned stuff about this, this things I didn't even know. And we just discussing if I show no interest in this conversation, she getting her answer on how I am. If I'm showing no interest, if I'm not asking questions, if I change the subject, if I don't seem firmly interested in this particular topic, you can't expect me to firmly care about this shit as we move forward.
Everything that you're learning about self-care, about boundaries, about goal setting, about um, controlling and managing your emotions, your thoughts, the things that we're learning about just interacting with one another in this book club Zoom and, and getting multiple perspectives as we look at these different movies like the one we're about to discuss and we all give our viewpoints. All of these things are helping you become a more well-rounded adult. And the idea is you want to now attract somebody if you're newly dating or you're currently dating somebody, you want to see if they're compatible with where I'm changing to be, like with where I'm going. And it has to be more than just the physical connection. A lot of y'all, as you get older and you realize like this, a lot of the stuff that we discuss, it sets in, you will start to realize the physical attraction is only a small part because that fades quick when I cannot get along with you as a person. A lot of us, oh we God. lead with that. You hear people say like, oh, I, I, I'm attracted to what I'm attracted to. Or you hear dudes talk about how, man, I just ain't into that type of woman. Like, I can't even get hard for somebody like that. But you could have the most beautiful woman you've ever been able to pull or the most handsome swag dot dude you can pull the minute that motherfucker character and ways attitude and personality conflict them looks be like they don't even fucking exist all right that's how you know the shit really ain't at the top of the list if it was we would be able to tolerate and be okay with a lot of stuff just based on how a bitch look it don't work like that this is why you see so many pretty, fine, beautiful couples break the fuck up. And even some of us be like, damn, they looked it so good together. Damn, he left her. Damn, she ain't with him no more. He ain't with her no more. That shit don't mean shit when you get down to the root of how a person want to be treated. Boundaries and us making agreements, setting the same standards and rules for fidelity and parenting and how to run a household, cleaning up. Uh, operating as positive adults, growth, progress, bill paying, <clears throat> having your basics together. Nigga be fine as fuck. After a while, when you realize he can't maintain, manage money, can't maintain a steady income to help, not even pay everything, but just pay half or contribute, motherfucker come be a motherfucker become unattractive like a motherfucker. <clears throat> That is, that's so true, Dorsey. When you first start, first started talking about the eight dates, this guy, fine as hell, basics together and everything. When I started asking him certain particular questions, I was like, he, he got uglier and uglier. Yep. I said, you know what? You ain't, I don't even want you know. Don't you even worry about it. Yeah. They, I, that See, was, I've go noticed, ahead. I've noticed, like, me dating prior to having kids is totally different now that I have kids. Because mm -hmm. these are the questions that, like, we have to ask. Yes. Because you, you know, it's like this person is not just gonna be around you; they're definitely going to be around your kids as yep. well. Yep. Yep. And it, and it and it turns into okay, how are they gonna treat my children? But then also, how are they gonna treat me in front of my children? And it becomes a a real test of can you get past the vanity. And really take a second and look at the character of this person. This is why I'm always saying eight dates. Give yourself some time to go through the different stages and levels you need to, to get to know one another. And there is no even time limit. Too, what you said, Chrissy? I said, even making friends, uh, having this information, I see now the friends I used to have, I'm like, hell, you got to date them too. Yep. Yep. A lot of times when you meet people, there there will be that one date or gathering where you get a glimpse of the people they hang around. And y'all know the famous saying, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. A lot of people, the people they hang around will tell you a lot about the stuff they ain't telling you. Yep, I used to get that a lot too. Like, how are you friends with her? Y'all two different people. She this way, you that way. I never understood that when men would say that. Like, it was something about even if you're not a hoe, hanging with one makes you look like one. Yeah. And that goes back to that same birds of a feather flock together. Yep. And believe it or not, growing up, I'm like, that's not true. That's not true. But it doesn't matter to outsiders. It looks like that. Yep. Your mind is still attracted to that. Yep. 
The other part of it is if you understand anything that I be saying about conditioning, it's no way possible for the things that's going on around you to not play a role in how you think and how you operate because it's what you eat. It's what you're eating. It's being processed uh, through repetition because these are your friends. So I got a question, little. So I've been in the book club probably about I said about six months, mm -hmm. and everything that I have learned has made me like so uncomfortable in a lot of like friendships. <laughs> and I have had so much pushback with like girls that I have literally known like since kindergarten, and it's to the point now where like I I don't know like we just. We're not compatible. And I had one that, that was really like, she liked my heart. And she pretty much told me like, I just feel like, you know, we can't be friends anymore because like, we're so different. It's like, you're elevating so fast and so much. And our friendship has changed like tremendously. Yeah. And it's very like unsettling for her. And I kind of feel some type of way because it's like, I'm trying to do the work on me. Yeah. But it is like really affected like majority of my relationships that I have had like for years. You growing, baby. You growing. This is what growth and success as at being yourself. This is what putting you first feels like. And what's going to be the beauty in it? Is that when you fully evolve, you're going to meet people that are going to be on the same level as you. And I, and I told y'all, like, um, I think a few Zooms ago, I explained, a few book club Zooms ago, I explained, it will get uncomfortable with friends and family. And there will be a time period where it will, where it will feel lonely. The, what, the way that you have to go about this is it's out with the old, in with the new. So as you lose old friends that match with the old version of you, you have to now start getting out, putting yourself in rooms with people that are now on what you're on. It's now time to be a grown woman. Let's lay out some goals where I add some new things to my life that have not been in my life prior. Let me go on Eventbrite. Let me look up some events and outings that I would not normally go to. Let me look into trying some new things that I would not normally try. Let me go to some restaurants I've never been. Let me go to some events that I wouldn't have thought to go to. Let me go to a, a museum. Let me go to a hospital charity event. Let me look up the next time a, a um, private um, airline company is releasing their new planes. This is where the rich folk at. This is where they show off and showcase the new Rolls Royces and shit like that. People who have money and want more and want more out of life. And they're not doing the low level po ass shit that the average minded person is doing. Rooms where people are operating from a space of we share information because we're already doing well. We don't worry about what he has or she has in her pockets or what she's doing. Let me go golfing. Let me go learn something and put myself in spaces where I would never normally be here. Instead of sitting around people that they're still trying to figure out why I want to set boundaries and self-care and fucking start managing my finances and create multiple streams. I want to get from around people that are making me uncomfortable about my growth and get around some people that are going to say, "Woo, keep growing. You almost there. Keep going. You almost there. Keep doing, keep pushing, keep changing, keep reading, keep working, keep moving around. This is adulting. That child in you, it wants to stay the same as far as not losing the stuff I become complacent with. It's like I won't change, but I don't want to lose the stuff I already have. I don't want to lose the people I already have, but the people that you already know, the people you've been friends with for years, they play a role in how your life got the way it